is homosexual. He's always known this, though he finds it difficult to admit it even to himself. David finds it easier to pretend that he is not gay. To pretend that his desire to love someone of his own sex can be suppressed. The only images of homosexuals that he has seen teach him to despise himself. Nothing encourages him to reveal his true nature to anyone. He is afraid of the disapproval of his family, friends and workmates. One of his constant fears is of the violence shown towards people like himself by the ignorant and prejudiced members of society. A society that will not accept his inborn sexual orientation. It never occurs to David that he makes a daily effort to accept a way of life that is equally alien to him. David is hard-working and conscientious. He's reasonably successful in his work, but now, in his twenties, the strain in his life is beginning to show. He's going to an office party. He knows that his difference is being noticed, and because of his inner fears, he tries desperately to keep up the false image behind which he hides. In his daily contact with his colleagues, he can lose himself in work, or relate to them through it. But on social occasions, like the party tonight, he becomes more and more aware of the loneliness of his personal life and of the growing pressure of his sexual frustration.
In Trafalgar Square today, over 3,000 people listen to speakers demanding changes in the law relating to the age of consent for homosexuals. A large crowd heard arguments supporting the idea of gay liberation, which has been growing through the policy of the campaign organizers. The speakers were urging a reduction from the age of 21 to 16 for homosexuals. This would make it the same as the present law for heterosexuals. The march had a sem is oppressed at home too. He's quite to believe that one day he will get married as so many of his friends have done. He's in despair because he knows this to be untrue. His father's disapproval of the gay movement makes him unable to talk to him about it. He is haunted by the image of a life of shame and fear that his growing acceptance of his homosexuality makes him feel he will have to face. again face another lonely day. Although David doesn't know it yet, this morning is a crucial one in his life. Today, a couple of lines in an advertising magazine dropped casually through the letterbox will make him realize that he need not be quite so alone.
PHG advertisement around with him for several weeks. He cannot yet find the courage to speak to another gay person, even on the telephone. Yes. Have you seen an advert, perhaps, in the paper? In the news shop, are fine. We're getting quite a few calls as a result of that. Um, I don't want to make assumptions, but would I be right in thinking that you're probably fairly used to things? Yeah, yes, you could say that. I'm totally new, actually. I see. Well, that's the usual thing for people who ring up from this advertisement. I wonder, would you feel happier about coming to see somebody to talk things over, rather than uh, chatting over the phone? It's up to you, or else, of course, you can come straight to a group meeting. How do you feel? Uh, yes, I'd like to chat to you very much. Yes, that's, that's fine. Right, well, what about Friday? Perhaps, I'll tell you what, I'll give you the address to start off with. That's right, I'll write it down. Yes, yes. Hi, Tom. Hello. I'm afraid I might be a bit late, actually. <laughs> oh, that's all right. But, uh, well, a lot of people don't turn up at all, you know. Uh, you know, so you've got off the shot. This is some stuff that you take on with you afterwards, uh, oh, yes, read it, you know. Um, gay news, have you seen oh, that before? Oh, yes, yes, I've heard of this. I've never actually seen a copy. Oh, it's good to borrow that tonight. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. Um, I've got some more stuff over here. This is literature about gay what people. That's society and the healthy homosexual. <laughs> Although he is still unsure about joining CHE, the contact member helps David to feel more at ease. Andy, one of the group's committee members, calls to deliver the monthly newsletter. Fine, about 10 in the hour, isn't there? Oh, well, approximately 200. 200, yeah, oh, that's fine. Well, I've got to go, there'll be cars outside, so. I'd see them, Well, I'd like to see you again sometime, David. Perhaps at the group meeting? Yeah, oh, he'll be along, I'm sure. Well, bye, John. Right. Bye, David. Bye, bye. Uh, this is all this stuff I put it in. Carry it back. We've got a lot of stuff here, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got a lot of stuff. That's, that's the form of it, of course. Right. Anyway, if you take it on and, uh, you know, have a look at it. Right. And come back and see us Well, again. I'll certainly be along again. Yeah, good. 
Well, none of these group meetings, that's the best one. Looking for the first time at gay literature, David is both excited and afraid. For him, going along to the local CHE group will be an enormous step to take. For the first time, he will be admitting not only to himself, but to other people as well, that he is part of an oppressed minority. For many homosexual men and women who contact CHE, the question is, will the gains offered be worth the exposure? David looks at his first copy of Gay News. He's overwhelmed by the variety of social events that are never seen in the newspapers he usually reads. But it is his textual need, quite naturally, that makes up his mind. A picture of two male lovers releases in him an overwhelming desire to love someone of his own sex, and he decides to join the group.
David is beginning to relax. He becomes involved in many of the group's activities and helps to make posters and banners for the group's forthcoming Mardi Gras fair. This is a fundraising event through which the CHE hopes to make contact with a large number of non-gay people. banner which the group will carry on the Gay Pride March and Rally in Central London. We're going to have a short talk tonight between ourselves about coming out in your family. The three important places where we talk about coming out are coming out at work, coming out with your friends, and coming out at home. And I think at home or with your family is probably the most difficult area of all. One of the best books which deals with this is Society and the Healthy Homosexual by George Weinberg, this book here, which I expect most of you know by now. Well, Chad, I can tell you. a talk and discussion on coming out to parents, David is aware that this new life of his is a secret that he keeps from his parents and colleagues. He feels that he can no longer go on living a lie. And he plucks up the courage to take another step forward. For many homosexual men and women, coming out to their parents is a step they can never take. The fear of making them ashamed because of the taboos of a hostile and ignorant society is too much to bear. For some, it means not only the loss of parental love, but the loss, too, of the only home they have, and an even greater insecurity than they already well, I feel. Think it would be rather difficult to tell my parents. Uh, I think my mother would be fairly understanding, but my father would probably be rather angry and could probably reject me completely. And I also think, well, both my parents would feel very hurt about the whole thing. They'd, they'd think it was their fault and that uh, possibly there was something they had done wrong as they'd brought me up. Um, well, these are very, very good experiences to hear about. I'm pleased to be able to hear from you. Cool, but you see, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that I'm sexually attracted to other men. I'm homosexual. Gay. I don't want to know. Do you understand? David tries to explain to his parents what CHE what is all about. To do is to go out what he is all about. He's decided that he can no longer go on living a lie. His parents' ignorance and fear, however, are almost equal to his own. How can he help them when he's found it so difficult to help himself? No doubt about it at all. You're, you're my parents. You must try to understand. It's disgusting. I'm appalled to think that a son of mine should turn out to be a bloody queer.
One of the worst aspects of their oppression is that gay people working side by side are often isolated from one another by their own fears. When he discovers that the girl who works next to him is also gay, he realizes that coming out helps homosexual people to find strength in one another, and he persuades her to join the group. Today, David is going on his first gay march. He knows that he's not expected to campaign unless he feels up to it, but the encouragement and support of the other members helps him to overcome his nervousness. He offers to march with the banner that he and members of the group have made. Thank you. 
with his parents is improving. Perhaps his growing happiness and self-confidence is the greatest help he can offer them. David, however, is one of few. As he prepares for the pantomime which aims to raise the spirit of the group, he realizes that not many homosexuals have had the courage to join CHE. Thousands and thousands more still live a life of fear and shame. They lead a double life in which their homosexuality is a secret kept from family and friends. 
He is one of the few who have begun to find, through gay liberation, that it is society which should be ashamed, and not them. Thank <laughs> you.